All right, so let's go through um, the initial Sumigeshi, um, failed Sumigeshi, failed uh, front headlock, um, and then we'll go into the precise um, details on the entrance into the Ashigarami. All right, the key um, concept that we're looking at here is the bridge between the lower body and the upper body and the upper body to the lower body. Whether it's through positional control or submission attacks, you absolutely must be able to bridge the gap between attacking the upper body and the lower body. If the lower body is backed away from you, the upper body is always available. If the upper body uh, is away from you and they're posturing up like this, the only way they, they, they can do that is to leave the lower body behind. Okay. If I'm like so, my uh, my hips are back and my hands are forward, I'm always vulnerable to upper body attacks, okay, from headlocks, being elevated, things like that. If I go to pull away from you, the only way that I can pull the upper body away is to bring my hip underneath my shoulders to some degree and the legs are exposed. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. This whole match was about constant Kazushi and going upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. All right, so initially we're standing in here. He's standing up over us. He's standing square, okay? Now, a square stance for a top player is not a smart stance, okay? It's a good defensive stance, but you can't pass anybody's guard like this, all right? So whenever you're standing on top, just off topic, I recommend never standing like this. There's no way that you can actually pass someone's guard with a square stance. It should, it's a purely defensive stance, okay? So if he's standing with a square stance, I come in, I go double Koichi. As I go double Koichi, he goes to come in and drop to his knees. But as he drops to his knees, his legs were sprawling back and he pretty much landed on top of me like this. This allowed me to, again, take a false grip up and over uh, the tricep, control his head, actually I used an overhook like so, and now, as soon as he sprawled, I went right into his sumigeshi, lifted his whole body off the floor, and dropped him right onto his back. As I went to go to come up, he came up too. I ended up with a single versus a front headlock. Now, he let go of the single and just started four-pointing and immediately came up. Now, what I should have done from this position, the second I saw his hands coming off the floor, is I should have just moved to an arm drag and went to a go-behind but I am very confident in my guillotine and returning people back to the floor, so I chose to start following him up. As he went to go, uh, start coming up, I was playing in this position. Now what I tried to do, was I tried to hit a throw by, where I'd walk in one direction, and then throw his head by in the opposite direction, and chase the far hip. That's what I wanted to do. And as I went to throw by, he did a good job of realizing this, and instead of Stepping this leg towards me, his head moved, and he just squared up, and he ended up like so. Okay, so that, that was the initial failure. Let's look at now the uh, initial entrance into an Ashigarami to getting heel exposure. Okay, so we, we were standing, or he was standing rather. I was uh, seeing a seated guard, and he had a two-on-one, or he had a post to my head like this. Again, pretty useless grip. Um, for actually doing jiu-jitsu. So I just immediately went two on one wrist. Now, in order for the upper body to move away, the lower body has to come forward. So he takes a step up towards me with that left leg. Okay, this allows him now to start posturing up and pulling away. As this happened, I came down with my right hand and connected myself to his ankle. Now initially, the grip behind the Achilles prevents him from kicking his leg straight back, but not forwards and around and circling out. So initially what I did was I controlled uh, one portion of the leg and reinforced it with my own leg. Okay? There's a certain way that you have to start uh, looking at these grips. Every grip that I make is a very sticky grip. If you notice when I make grips on people, they're freaking out to, to, to get their, their arms or legs away. It's because my grips are very sticky. There's an art to having sticky grips. Okay? If I just grab my partner's foot like this and she goes to move away, it's useless. But when I cover the back of the leg with my hand and the front of her leg with my leg, now when she goes to initially move away from me, even if she goes to kick away, I have an initial grip, an initial stickiness. Now I switched off 
to a two on one. So when she went to pull away, I moved from the ankle down to the sole of the foot. If any of you guys remember 2017, um, ADCC against Cyborg, I went double Koichi. I came in, I grabbed his foot, he went to go kick away, and I had a two on one like so. And then I pulled him into an Ashigarami. Right? This is very, very similar. So I'm in here, initially one, two. She goes to kick away, I switch off, now we're on a two on one. She goes to kick away again, she can't. Now, he realized he couldn't move away from me because I had his leg controlled. So he squared his leg to me and started going, uh, started coming to engage my guard, all right? As this happened, I fed my leg through and switched to an Achilles grip. Now he was smart. He wanted to backstep this leg and get two of his legs to the same side of my body, negate my Ashigarami, and now he can go into attacks. The problem is, as this happened, I disrupted his backstep. So he went to go backstep, I disrupted it with this leg, and now as he planted, it allowed me to come up and enter into this leg like so, and then throw my leg up and over into an outside Ashigarami. Now when we're playing an outside Ashigarami, let's make sure of a few things. If my opponent is standing up over me with a solid base, it's very important that I keep an Achilles grip with my partner's knee trapped within my knee line, the line that draws my two knees together. This is very important because even if I lose my partner's knee, the Achilles grip allows me to reclaim my partner's knee, okay? If I'm attacking a heel hook and she's standing over me and she's on, she has good base, now, if, I, if she pushes my knees down and she goes to run away from me, there's no stickiness anymore. She can easily free the knee. Whereas, if she does clear my, uh, my knee line and her knee comes out and she goes to run away from me, the Achilles grip will keep me strongly connected to her where now I can recapture and recline the leg. Okay? So we have an initial Achilles grip, especially when someone's standing over us. When you sit them down to their butt or get them off balance, then they can start to attack our outside heel hooks. All right, but in general, I want to stay with an Achilles grip with someone standing over me when I have an outside Ashigarami and a Rimi Ashigarami or any kind of X guard, reverse X guard variations from here, okay? Just so I can fly my partner's leg. The chances of her freeing her knee become much greater when she's standing over me, okay? This, um, is a, she has an ability to put weight down onto me, pushing my knees down with all of her body weight, and she has an ability to create much more explosive movement because she's standing up and just jumping away from me. So we have an initial Achilles grip, and we want to make sure that our Ashigurami is placed, uh, we place our hips as close to our partners as possible. So what I want with an outside Ashigurami is to make sure that my hips are coming up close to my partners. Okay, you'll notice she immediately is off balance my hips come up. She has to bring her head forward to not get taken over. All right. Now, how I off balance with an outside Ashigurami on a standing opponent is directly correlated, is there a direct correlation between where her shoulders are and where her hips are. If her shoulders are leaning forward like so, it's very difficult to off balance a person backwards in this direction. Okay. If her shoulders are directly above her hips, now it's incredibly easy uh, to off balance someone backwards. So we play this game where I start initially with a nice high ash Ashigarami, and now I try, if her shoulders are up and over her hips, I try to knock her backwards in this direction. She has to bring the head forwards, like so. As the head comes forward, now I can start pulling my knees to my chest and start, start threatening my right knee turning into her knee to start exposing her heel out in this direction. In order for her to stop that, she has to take her head back in this direction and bring her shoulders to some degree back over her hips. Okay, so we have an action reaction here, where I play a dilemma game where if, if she's moving out in this direction, I threaten sending her down to her butt. Now she pushes back into me, I threaten exposing the heel. As she puts her foot back on the floor, I threaten sending her down in this direction. So I play a dilemma of, Whenever she brings her head in this direction, we off balance in the same direction by simply taking our two knees and turning them out like so to get heel exposure. If she slips the heel and moves back towards me, now I can start to off balance in this direction. Okay, in our case, we hit 
a couple of pumps in each direction. So I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. And then we came in and we exposed the heel. We get to initial heel exposure, okay? Um, so that's as far as we went in the initial uh, segment right here with Tim. Um, concentrating on the gap, the bridge between lower body and upper body, upper body and lower body. Um, and the constant Kazushi work from both a seated open guard and from an outside Ashigrami with an Achilles grip, um, depending on where my partner's shoulders are relative to the hips.